All right, so um, as you guys know, uh, I'm the volunteer assistant here. Uh, my name's Casey Martin. Uh, I run the box um, for, for our games. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the sub game um, in transition, as well as what you guys can do uh, 6v6 wise to kind of create some more offense for your team. Um, so, and uh, you know, why it's critical to implement in your system. All right, first and foremost, uh, why is it important? Um, you know, for us, always having the correct personnel on the field is, you know, critical, especially on the defensive end. Um, you know, when, you know, I get yelled at by Kenny all the time, you know, why is he on the field? And it's like, you know, we just got stuck. Uh, you know, that's kind of what we're trying to eliminate there. We're trying to eliminate the mismatches that can happen. Um, you'll, you never lose a possession this way. Um, you know, you're kind of controlling who goes where, uh, you know, and you don't have anybody that goes off sides. I mean, that's the main goal. Uh, and then, you know, there's delayed subs that happens a few times. Uh, and that's what we really try to eliminate by having that team four drill, making sure that the people know when they're going on the field. Um, and it really helps me when the guys understand where they're supposed to go. Uh, and so I'm not, you know, in game management the whole time and just be basically being like, well, you need to go here, you need to go there. Uh, and they kind of understand that. So that kind of really helps as well. Um, for the um, matchups, um, sometimes you can create ma mismatches out there which you guys can take you know, full advantage of. Um, and then another thing that it really does, um, the sub game, is it makes the other team prepare for it. Um, you know, so if you have, you know, if you can find some advantages of it, you know, I don't know how much scouting you guys do at the high school levels, um, but if a team comes and watches you and he says, man, they're really getting us on this, you know, the pick game here you know, to create you know, the transition, they're going to have to go back, figure out a way to scout that, prepare for it, and then they're going to have to use valuable practice time to go back and do that. So, the, you know, as little time as it takes you guys to get your team to, to you know, evolve into the, uh, you know, the sub game and to create those 6v5, 5v5 situations that you want to play with, um, you know, it takes more time out of the other team scouting you guys and preparing for that. Uh, and then it just puts the team in, you know, unfamiliar territory on the defensive ends. I mean, you know, how many guys, do you guys practice situations where you're 5v5 or 4v4s? Do you guys ever do that? You guys practice that extensively? Okay. Well, you know, a lot of teams don't do that, but you know, in college or in high school, you know. So people, you know, defending that is very tough. You know, they're not they're not used to those situations. Um, and then some things to you know really think about. You know, what what's your philosophy and what, you know what's your personnel? Um, you know, do you have a high octane off offense with an okay to solid defense? You know, we think of that. We think about Denver as you know one of those teams that you know really, really relies on a solid fundamental defense. And they just go out, they have a very, very high octane offense. Um, do, you have a, you know, do you have a really good defense? Um, you know, like Notre Dame was, you know, a few years back where they had to just manufacture goals, where they really slowed down the tempo. Um, you know, you got to think about that. Um, you know, at the high school level, some of you guys might just, you know, I call it a hero. You know, he's the guy that does everything. You know, he runs up and down the field. You know, you expect him to stay on the field the entire time. Um, you know, or do you have a team that's, uh, young, inexperienced, and sometimes overmatched. We've all been in that situation. We got to come up with a plan to kind of, you know, muck it up, to try, try and create some goals and some situations which are favorable to us. Um, and then a few other things to take into consideration along the lines of, you know, do you have a, a face-off guy that's going to win a lot of face-offs? Is he, you know, does he have the stick skills to stay in there and, you know, run the 6v6 offense? Or, you know, is he going to have to come out every time? Um, does the opposition have a good face-off guy in the same situations? Does he like playing defense? Can, you know, if we have a good face-off guy and they have a terrible guy, can we take advantage of that, you know, just by making him stay on the field and putting him in, you know, precarious situations where he's going to feel uncomfortable and not be ready? Um, how creative are your players? Um, you know, are you guys, you know, guys that are going to, you know, just stick to a certain system? Are you going to allow them to freelance or run off, you know, or just run off a straight script? You know, you got to be prepared. Um, for your guys to make some mistakes in this situation as well. Uh, and then having a really good LSM, I think, is really key, uh, a guy that can create offense. I mean, if you guys have ever watched uh, Bryant play college lacrosse, their, their sub game is what they develop their offense on. They've always had really good LSMs. They keep their LSMs in, on the field. Um, you know, I'll mention the, the term rabbit a little bit. And it's kind of playing with the guy at the midline, you know, to make sure that, you know, if he starts running off 10 yards before and I cut back, you know, we're going to create that 6v5 situation. So they've done a lot with their LSMs in creating that, that situation to create, um, you know, favorable situations. Uh, so I'm just going to take you guys through um, kind of what, you know, each team's going to look to do. Uh, in the high octane offense, um, you know, as I mentioned, Denver, uh, they have a highly efficient offense. 
Um, what, they've, what they've really turned to is a shield ride, we call that. Uh, and basically what it is is it's protecting themselves from giving up any transition, getting their guys in on defense for their 6v6, uh, and just making sure that it's a 6v6 game because, you know, they're highly content with playing 6v6 because they know they can score 13, 14 goals, um, and their defense is going to give up, you know, 10. They're happy with that. They don't want to give up any transition to make that, you know, to skew that s the system anymore. Um, and really what this does is it makes sure they have the right defensive personnel on it at all times. It eliminates all the sub game. Um, so if you guys have this, you know, I highly recommend you guys going to this. Now that doesn't mean, what they do is they eliminate the sub game on the defensive end by they just get back on in, in the hole and play, uh, you know, play defense. Um, you know, the downfall is, is it allows the opposing team to, to basically clear it 100% because what you're really doing is you're clearing two middies off right away, getting one midi in the hole, and basically, you know, covering up, you know, the short sticks. So basically, you're giving it up 100% of the time. Uh, and it really just forces the teams to beat you 6v6. Um, so what I will do is basically draw up uh, what shield ride basically looks like so you guys can get a better understanding of it. Um, so if we're running a basic, um, really quickly here, okay, box is over here. All right, so, what we, so if you're running a basic, we consider this a 1-3-2 set. All right, so one guy behind, three guys across the midline, two guys above. Say this guy came down, shot the ball, okay? What they like to do is they like to get one guy up in his face, in the goalie's face, to avoid any over-the-top over the throws, okay? The far midi, okay, is going to drop deep into the hole to cover up any LSM or any guy poaching, trying to get deep for the up-and-over pass, okay? And then these two middies, the guys that are deepest, closest to the goal or closest to the box, want to sprint and get off immediately, Okay, what this does is allows them to get their LSM uh, and their D-MIDI on as quickly as possible. Um, and then the, uh, the other two attackmen want to fill in and find uh, the two shorts that are going to be staying in on offense, or to clear the ball. They're two defensive middies. Uh, and what this does is basically doesn't allow them to have an equal or a nice, easy run out, uh, basically going up the field and trying to create transition. So really what this is designed to do is it's a protective ride, play 6v6, get in the hole, and just play safe. Uh, and that's kind of what Denver does, as we'll see in this video. I just have it a quick. They did it against us last year, or two years ago. Um, as you'll see, the sh and I can't stop it. So as you'll see, we made a save. The attackman gets right up in the goalie's face, making sure that nothing gets taken away. We dropped a low uh, midi there. Two attackmen collapse. Okay. As you can see from behind, they already have their three middies in with their pole. Um, so they're all set, ready to play six on six offense, or six v six defense. All right, so they just basically protected themselves from giving up any transition all right, because they, they safeguarded it because they know they can defend us six v six or any team they play, they really want to defend that. Um, you know, a solid defense and a weak offense, uh, you know, really their main goal is not to give up any transitions because they understand that they have a really solid defense. So, you know, think Notre Dame a few years ago before they started to push it a little bit. Uh, you know, they had a really solid defense and their offense manufactured. They had to, you know, you know prod and, you know, use all the tactics that they could. Uh, and, you know, why would you use the sub game here? Um, you know, so it shortens the game up a little bit. So if you think about subbing can take anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute, and you guys can prolong, you know, prolong that as long as you want. You know, referees are most likely not going to call you in a stalling when you're subbing guys in and out, when you're making an effort, kind of advancing the game. Um, so this is a way, so if you guys are understanding that, you know, your defense is really solid, you guys haven't had the ball very often, you guys can kind of shorten the game up, all right, if you guys are playing some of the, you know, high-powered offenses and you guys want to keep the guy, game down to, you know, in, into the low, you know, into the high nines, eights, you know, so you guys can shorten the game up. Uh, you guys can also create mismatches here. You know, if a team doesn't shield ride and they have people on defense, you guys can then create offense by, you know, setting picks on ball or setting off ball picks, tr trying to get them to switch and then sub our guys off with their guy having to stay on. Uh, and then it always, you know, creates some confusion. Um, you know, the, the main part of the defense is communication. You know, sometimes that breaks down, sometimes they're exhausted. Uh, and just a bunch of things, you know, go into that to create that confusion. Uh, for the hero, you know, you have that one amazing player uh, who you will ride all game. 
Um, you know, you're expecting him to play your offense. He's your shutdown D midi, probably your face-off guy sometimes. And, you know, what this does is, you know, if you, you, know, if, if you want him to only play offense, if he's a face-off guy and you know he's exhausted, you know, we as, you know, offensive guys want to attack that. You know, we want to see, okay, we got we to push him all day long, um, especially, you know, us as offensive guys going against him. We want to make sure he stays on the field. We want to attack him. We want to get him exhausted so that, you know, by the late third quarter, you know, fourth quarter, he's, you know, dead tired and he can't produce at the level that he should. Um, you know, again, creates confusion. Uh, we can create offense. Um, what the sub game can also do is if you're, you know, focused on this one guy, he's the best player, um, and, you know, they're doubling him because they understand that he's your whole offense, you know, what the sub game can some, sometimes do is create offense with other players through that. Uh, and then it also takes some pressure off the hero if you can, guys can help him out anyways. Uh, and if you want to expose their hero, um, you know, keep the guy on the entire time by setting picks on ball, getting him to switch, uh, and then attacking him when he gets on there to, uh, you know, wear him out on defense. Uh, and like I said, with a young, inexperienced, sometimes overmatched team, you know, sometimes you just got to muck it up. You got to find ways to create those mismatches and, um, you know, find their weak spot and attack it. Uh, and then another thing it does is, like I said, it makes them scout you. You know, I think that's a huge thing is, you know, you guys have a limited two-hour practice. You know, if, if, the, if a coach can, has to spend 15 minutes look, figuring out how to stop a pick game up top to create that, to, to get rid of that mismatch, right, you're now making that, you know, four, 15 minutes. Um, you know, he's not allowed to, you know, work on shooting. He's not allowed to work on his offense. You know, he's got to focus on that, you know, that switch and, you know, how you play that defense. Uh, some terms you might hear throughout this time uh, are bingo, uh, which is our offensive call for, you know, an advantageous situation. So basically anytime we create a 6v5, you know, we like to attack 5v5s and 4v4 situations if we can. You know, the defenses, you know, sometimes lack communication there, which will then increase our chances of scoring. Uh, the alert is basically the opposite of the bingo call. Defense will, you will know, hear them a lot. Scream alert, alert, alert. Basically it just tells everybody that's on the same page. Um, that there's a, situ there's a situation coming back the other way. Rabbit, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's playing, you know, playing with your guy in the sub situation. So if, you, if you're subbing off a guy uh, and he's running hip to hip with you, you can turn around. If he continue to, continues to run up the field to sub off, you just turn around, gain a 6v5 situation and kind of just playing with your man. Uh, and then Cinco is a defensive call to alert each other about a 5v5 situation uh, and basically just changing that up. Uh, Many of you guys might do this, many of you guys might not. Uh, subbing through the midline, uh, it, you know, we call it x-ray. Um, and there's an x at the, you know, the uh, midline, basically where we want our guys to sub through. Uh, what this does, um, uh, basically the way to go through it is you take a close defender off the field, you put a midfielder on at the midline, um, and then what you'll do is you'll just run a guy off through the midline, sub a guy on, it's easy enough. Uh, it get, what it do, two, you know, one thing it does is it gets the midfielder running straight downhill. If, the, if you give him the ball, he can you know, attack the ball downfield. Um, the defense might not be matched up appropriately. Sometimes they might not get their attackman off to put a defensive midi on the field. So you might get you know, a little bit of a situation if they both run off at the same time. Uh, and then, like I said earlier, it, you, know, you can slow down the pace of the game this way. Uh, twins. Um, we call it twins because we're taking two guys off the field at once. Um, we'll put the LSM to the midline and the defensive midfielder to the box in, you know, in a perfect situation. Why do you guys feel like we would do that? Why would we bring the LSM to the midline and the D midi to the box? What, what, why? Yeah, so, 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 that's, so Twins is that situation. So most of the times, you know, people aren't going to be set up to, to sub two D midis in or to get their LSM on. But why do you think we bring the LSM to the midline and not, you know, what, not the D-MIDI? People will probably see the short stick and try and lock, lock them up. They might get a long stick through. Or... Okay, sometimes, yeah. Because you're trying to leave the other team's best offensive player on the field. Yes, we're also trying to do that. But, but really what we're trying to do is, say, say we want to use the 6v5 situation, our guy throws the ball backwards, right, and we get a turnover. We still have a long stick on the field. Okay, so we're not, so if we brought a defensive midi for there and we had that 6v5 situation, we ended up turning it over right away, right? We have already pulled our close defensemen off the field, so now we want to make sure that we have at least three defensemen on there. When we sub out the midfielder, we can just put our fourth defenseman in there. So it kind of creates that, 
you know, situation for us that we're not, you know, we do turn the ball over. We're not, you know, screwed coming back. Uh, and then you know, another way, like you guys mentioned, you can disguise and force matchups that way as well. Um, so we're gonna go. So I'm gonna go over just some some simple um, things that we like to do at Michigan that kind of have created some situations to help us out. Um, you can either do it with your LSMs, your Fogos, or actually your D middies as well. If you understand and you recognize who is on them, you know, do you have an offensive midfielder on you? It's probably a good idea to to you know put the sub game into effect. If you have a defensive midfielder and you understand that he's going to stay on the field, it's probably not necessary. You probably already need to go through and just keep running, your, just sub them out easily and get into your 6v6 offense. You know, Fogos, you know, a lot of them don't like to play defense. Let's be honest. They, want, they just want to pick up the ball, get it to your offense, and get out. So anytime you can keep them on the field um, and, you know, play, make them play defense is, you know, very, very advantageous for the offense. Um, so then, so what we're talking about here... Um, Perfect. So what we like to talk about here, okay? So this is our transition to our sub game, okay? So what we want to do is we just want to recognize who's coming down the field and who's on us. So we're going to be into our normal situation on offense with an attackman in our 1-3-2 set, okay? Our LSM is going to come to the crease, okay? Once we get it to X, okay, what we like to do is we like to come set a cross screen here, okay? What you like to do is you want to be five yards above GLE and outside the tangent, but inside the hash mark, okay? What this allows it to do is it allows the, the, the crease to be wide open, okay? What we're looking to make happen here is once this attackman passes it through X, the pick comes, right? You're going to have an O midi on you here, okay? So what we want to happen is the best thing that could happen is they could switch these, this pick, Okay, which now makes you have an O midi on an attackman and your LSM on a close defenseman, which means you just you just won that situation. You can now develop that. And this LSM really sets the pick, sprints off. Okay, what can also happen is you'll see in some of the videos is the O midi will get locked up, kind of get stuck here. The defenseman will kind of run into each other. Okay, and you're going to create you know LSM up here, O midi up here, running off at a 10 yard sprint. So now you have a 10 yard basically sub situation coming back, coming into, into the play at a 6v5 situation, okay? So you'll see this a little bit, um, but it kind of just creates that sub game that you can do, and it's, it's really easy. You don't even need a real good LSM for it. You know, you can kind of distract the other guys with it. Um, so this is taken from our practice, um, from one of our drills. Uh, come on now. Um, as you'll notice, uh, we only have five guys in uh, because we're, you know, we're really practicing. Uh, you know, just on the, the Twins game that we might have subbed a defense midi out. We want to push this 5v5 situation. All right, so as you see, if you notice the LSM, uh, if we, can I go back? Yes. You might notice that the LSM, set, this was actually the first time that we tried to implement it. So you'll notice the LSM kind of set it low, didn't really give us much. But what you will notice is with this situation, okay, it creates confusion uh, just off of this kind of transition work the defense isn't really set up, which allows us to get a step down 12 yard shot, okay? And we bury that right there. Okay, we're coming down again, trying to create this situation, okay? You'll notice the offensive midi is not really comfortable playing in this sub situation, doesn't really understand how to defend it right away. So he's pretty much late getting back, okay? As you'll notice, he's got about a five yard head start, okay? Which creates, you know, can create a little bit of instant offense, okay? You know, if you're thinking about this, if you're thinking about the sub game, you know, on average in the college level, we get about, you know, 25 to 35 possessions a game on offense. So if, if you're creating, you know, you're thinking about 60, you know, possessions that you can create, whether you can, you know, create offense or, you know, create offense for the other team by, you know, mis-subbing or, you know, effectively subbing. So think about it that way in terms of, you know, you, get, you might get 30 opportunities to create something for yourselves. If you get one or two, you've done yourself, a, you know, a great job because you now manufactured two more goals than you would have had, and it's easy for you guys. Okay, so if we finish this up, uh, I don't like this thing anymore. Uh, I'll speed this up. Uh, so we go to the next one. So as we come down here, you'll notice the pick was set. Okay, nothing happened there. Okay, so, so if 
This is a disaster. Um, give me a second here. They got to create something for this. Um, so, so you'll notice, where is it? Here we go. You'll see this attackman up in the top. Okay, he came off the pit. He came off the pick. Realized there was nothing there. Okay, he create. He made this really smart play by setting an extra pick, which gives us an extra five, you know, ten yard space, which we now create a five v four com coming back, which gives us, you know, a step down, but we don't get anything. So um, we'll just. Oh. So that's so that's the situation that you can play. Um, so if anybody ever does this to you, if you guys want to learn how to play, learn how to play it on ball. Um, so what we like to teach our guys is defensively how to play against this. All right. So you have the LSM here. You have your O midi on him. Okay. You have an attackman over here, and you have your close defenseman on him. He's going to set the screen here. You want the attackman to come over top. What you want is you want the O midi to get above this pick. Okay. And try and get a little chunk on him. Okay. What this does is it forces this attackman to kind of go up and allows this defenseman to get under the pick and shut down that lane easily, okay? So what you want to do, get, get above it. And also what this does is it allows, once this guy sprints up, okay, you're going you're gonna to then be able to marry him. We call it marrying. You're, you're, you know, you're walking down the aisle together. We basically call it, you know, sprinting off with each other. We want to go hip to hip with each other. Uh, and so if you can get above this pick, it'll, it doesn't get, you know, it gives you the chance to react against his movements, all right? Um, so what this is, is we're going to work on our pick on ball. Um, so what we like to do as well is same situations you got to, you realize is that um, with this pick on the ball, uh, we can now create a situation above the cage where we want to get it coming in. So if we have the same thing, we're going to start out in our 1-3-2, okay, you can either have you know, an LSM here or D Medi here doesn't really matter. If we, if you you got you got to understand who's the guy you want to attack. Okay, he's a D Medi, he's an O Medi. Okay, you want to attack the O Medi. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a pick on ball. We're gonna have him come over top of it. Okay, and what it does is it forces these guys who aren't in situations where they like to be to talk to each other and and actually understand what they want to get out of it. Okay, so in this situation, so the old midi is probably not going to not going to want to switch that. Okay, he doesn't want to switch it because he's going to have to stay on the stay on the field. Okay, so more than likely, he's just going to be married up hip to hip with that guy, allowing him to do his job. The LSM. Okay, the midi just wants to attack. You know, downfield, get into this pick, force the D midi into the pick. Okay, and what it does is it now forces us into a situation where we now have basically a 4v4 to a 4v3 coming back. Because we're going to have a guy, we're going to have our midfielder coming downhill. Um, when you guys get into this situation, what you guys really want to think about um, is keeping your, your principles consistent. Okay? What we like to do is we like to you know, swing our front attackman through, get him to the crease, okay? force this guy out, and then we like to pitch backside and get back help if we need to. So what you guys want to do is, in this situation, if you're defending it, okay, you're going to have a defender above the cage. And what you want to do is basically, you're going to have them, either they have to, now they have to figure out a way, they're either coming from the adjacent angles, okay, or they're going to pull a guy off the crease, which we're now looking to create a 4v3 on the backside by this guy coming downhill. First, if he, nobody slides to him, you're going to shoot, right? That's what happens the majority of the time because the communication's not there, okay, and you're just going to get a straight shot off that. Um, but really what you're looking to do with this sub game, okay, is like always, is just create the mismatch, right? If the old midi decides he's going to stay back here, okay, and wait for this midi to come play, your LSM's not going to come off, you're then going to get a midi on, playing, you know, this old midi could say, oh crap, I have to get off the field, and you'll now create a 6v5, 5v4 situation depending on what you do coming back. Does anyone have any questions on that? Um, so, if, so you'll notice, so we set a pick on ball, all right, so what you'll notice is that um, 
our MIDI here, the, uh, right there in the blue, plays underneath of them, doesn't get a very good chunk, all right, allows the guy to go downhill, okay, also creates a situation. One thing that we like to do is we want to try and keep the ball above uh, GLE on this, right, to force the ball back to get them to rotate, okay, because you can always get, um, you know, a, a, an unsettled situation on the back side if you guys throw the ball backwards. Um, so we threw it down this time. They actually covered it up great. Um, so we're attacking an offensive midi here. Okay, we get, we don't even get the guy up top. Guy turns back, creates a situation. Okay, gives us, a, gives us an easy shot, creates a goal. Okay, so that's just basically playing, playing on ball. So uh, if, we can, if we dissect what you need to do on ball, okay, so what we like to do here, is this guy's given a little bit too much room, okay? He's not playing on top of this. We like to get our guy up here into this range so that he can get a chunk, force that guy to, you know, kind of go towards the sideline instead of getting his downhill movement, all right? What we want here is this guy to basically marry up uh, and then follow the guy off the field. So you'll notice, okay, this guy basically didn't do anything, didn't get a chunk, okay, and isn't married Delayed, as you notice, he's got about a 10, 15 yard head start. Um, and to be honest with you guys, this is all predicated on even if, you know, them having the correct guys in place while you're subbing. You know, I, you know we've seen it a bunch of times where, you know, you know we're, they're playing, you know, we're playing the 6v5 game, you know, we're playing the, you know, the sub game. They don't have any guy at the midline. Okay, we sub a guy off. They sub a guy off. Now we have a 6v5 for an extended period of time. Um, so that's just, you know, forcing them to get the attackman off, get their right guy on so that they can put a correct defender on. Uh, the hanger. Um, the hanger is a situation um, which you can play, which it creates a 5v5 situation. Um, so the hanger is basically when your defensive player is now in the offensive zone uh, and he stays about 10 yards above the box um, with the defender locked on him, okay? What this does is it causes the defending team to defend a 5v5 situation, which they don't like. You know, they want to play that 6v6 defense where they have the top or the bottom fills, they have all the slides, they have the hot, they have the reads. Okay, so they're talking through that. Um, and then, uh, you know, what, so on top of that, the defender might just leave you. So what, it, so what it really looks like is this. Okay, so you're playing your 6v6 offense, your LSM's still in there. Okay. Okay, and what you're really doing here, mind my box, um, the LSM is just going to hang out here with an O midi, could be a D midi, could be anything. And you're just going to be playing whether you want to do your two midis up top and clear out the crease with, we, and you have an open crease. Okay, and really what this guy is doing is he's just hanging out. Okay, he's hanging out playing, playing defense, or I mean just waiting for a defensive situation to happen. Um, we, if we ever turn the ball over in this situation, we already have our LSM on the field, so we're pretty comfortable there, okay? Also, what it could do is it could freak out the omitty, okay? And he might just run off, and at this point, if you, have a, if you have a quality LSM, this is perfect, okay? He's just gonna step back in and run that 65 offense, okay? So that's basically if you guys have a good LSM who can create some offense, who you like. Um, even, if it's, even if it's not really that high quality of an LSM, he can still distract and create that 65 situation. He can sprint to the crease, um, and kind of run other, you know, other plays off of that. Uh, so that's pretty much the hanger. Um, in, um, so a few other tricky sub situations. And, and the best part about subbing is, you know, you guys can become as, you know, as creative as you guys would like. Um, you know, depending on what situations you guys want to accomplish um, and, you know, how, how much time you want to devote to this and how much time you feel a 6v5 situation can happen. Um, one of them that ha we've seen before, all right, is basically the pick at X from behind. Uh, when the attackman would have the ball, okay, the LSM is going to go set the screen. He now knows he has an, oh, an offensive midi on his team, okay. And what this is trying to do is you're going to run off of it, and really all you're trying to do is get them to switch, okay. So now if they switched, they would have an O midi on an attackman, which is a great situation for a lot of our guys. Okay, and now they have, they have their uh, close defenseman on an LSM. The LSM can sprint off or sprint up the field to create that situation. So it's just kind of a unique situation that you can create. 
Um, and you know, with all this, if it doesn't work, it doesn't hurt you in the end. So um, the next one is the LSM slam pick. Um, doesn't get used as much um, just because a lot of LSMs don't like to handle the ball. Um, but if you think about it, okay, it's the same situation coming down. The LSM's coming down on kind of a slow break. Okay, he's going to throw the ball down. The attackman's going to come off. He's going to continue down and set that pick. Um, you know, in the best situation, Omidy is, Omidy is playing with him a little bit. Okay, the Omidy switches it, gets the LSM on the close defenseman, the attackman's on the OM, and we get an advantage there. The next one is a double high pick, um, which is basically you have your D midi, your LSM, in either order, whichever way you want to see. If they hold two offensive midis on the field um, and you want to get this situation, okay, you have your offensive midi who already has the ball, okay, he's going to come off a double screen, okay, and what this is going to do is most likely they're not going to talk through the whole situations. Now you're going to have two guys at the line here, two midis that are coming in, okay, and I guarantee they're not going to have enough attackmen coming off the field to put your guys up, to put their D middies on. Um, and like always, offensive middies never like to play defense, so um, you can gain that situation. Uh, you know, the 6v6, 6v6, 6v6 subbing offense. Uh, always keep you know, the principles constant. Um, you know, you don't really have to change your ideas uh, for this. You know, keep things similar because, you know, when it, when it all goes, People are going to remember what you guys have been preaching the entire time, so keep that the same. Uh, continue to clear space for one another. Uh, keep the ball above GLE if possible. Uh, it allows full advantage of the quick 6 5 situations. Forces the defense to rotate. Creates the unsettled situation on the backside. Uh, with 5v5 and 4v4 offenses, um, you know, like we showed with all those picks, you know, a hard dodge is really what's going to you know, create that for you. Um, you know, if he, Dodges, you know, somewhat hard, and he kind of allows the defense to react. You know, good hard dodges down the alley is, is what's going to create, um, you know, that, off, that sudden offense for you. Um, obviously, if no one slides, continue to score. Uh, force a slide. You know, that's always what we want to do. We always want to force a slide to create that defense to be rotating and moving, okay? Because the more times they move, the less time they're going to communicate, okay? And the, off the you know, offense has that advantage. Uh, throw to the backside as quickly as possible. Uh, in 5v5 situations, it's going to be a 4v4, 4v3. In a 4v4 situation, throwing to the backside is going to create that 3v2 on the backside. Uh, and to recap, uh, so the sub game, you know, really can create some unsettled situations. Uh, it allows you to take full advantage of the omids, not knowing how to play defense, being in situations that they're not really comfortable with. Uh, it forces the defense into uncomfortable 5v5 and 4v4 situations. Uh, it can force the omid to stay on the field for longer periods of time, exhausting him. Uh, creates mismatches for the offense, uh, and then it just gives, you know, like I said earlier, it gives the opposing coaches an extra dimension to scout, develop a plan, and how to defend it, and then take some time to practice it and get our players to understand it. I mean, we, 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 we've devoted probably, I don't know, an hour to our alert game defensively, just making sure that our offensive middies and our demit and our, and our goes and you know, guys that we don't want to be playing defense, how they understand how to be playing each sub situation, each pick on ball. When our guys are subbing off the field, you know, it's highly important for us to make sure that we get the correct guys on, that our guys understand how to play it. Because, you know, at the highest levels, you know, a 6v5 situation for five seconds is going to create that goal. You know, many goals are, you know, many games are, you know, divided by one goal. So, you know, that chance that we don't give up, you know, is going to allow us to, you know, compete against. Um, you know, the best guys. Uh, any questions? Yes? What's your, um, like what's your well, our face-off guy gets right off the field. Yeah. Um, it, dep it depends. You know, you some, we usually go twins, to be honest with you. Uh, and what that does is it puts, you know, puts the other team to have to sub a guy through the box and a guy through the midline. Um, but if not, um, we usually keep the LSM on longest just to sub that and then we go there. It's basically, what we basically look for is who's that, who's the omitty that's going to be staying on, that wants to come off the field. Basically, he's going to be the last sub. So that they can't get that, you know, they can't realize that and then switch off that to get to the other guy. Anything else?